Randy, what's uh, what's your business? Yeah, my my main business is uh, fish, fish brokerage, uh, typical palengke. So, um, you know, um, from the ground, <laughs> typical palengke, talaga. So, typical palengke. Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, the local market where where you you do the the fish, uh, but but we do the brokerage like. We have suppliers from Sambuanga and Jensen coming over fishing uh, fishing companies, yeah. uh, and I we dis dis distribute it yeah. for the whole province of Davao del Norte. Okay, so yeah. let me get you're a broker. Yeah. And uh, by the way, welcome to Success Live. Is this my camera? <laughs> Welcome to Success Live. We are here with Randy and my my Marquez from Tagum, and they're going to explain to us their business. So, so just you you are the broker. You are the one in the middle. Yeah, yeah. So you don't own fishing boats. No. So you you get the fish from all these uh, com fishing companies. Yeah, I I sell the fish for them in the local markets. Okay. So you sell all the mm. fish in the local markets. Markets plural. plural. How many markets are we talking about? Uh, I distribute in one place, but uh, all the the nearby municipalities okay. are getting from me. So we do it early in the morning. It's about two two a.m. until nine. You started this business? Uh, actually, it's my mother-in-law's business also. So when 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 I graduated from college, wait, waiting for work, uh, I, I helped them. Yes, and I I, uh, I started to be a little bit like um, well versed with the business. As uh, uh, then after I I got uh, hired by Philacor. Yes, uh, I I was also a a sales analyst for GE and White Westinghouse. Oh, my time after. So you you were so not both. you were not into this business early on. No, no, no. Uh, I when I started. You were an employee. Yeah, I was. Uh, I was an employee. I uh, were uh, helping her mom. Then when I got hired, uh, I I started to to work uh, with 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 uh, the big company. Okay. So traveling around, and since we were planning to get married, yeah, uh, we really uh, thought of uh, starting our own business. Okay. So it so happened that I met a person. I I asked him, "We're about to start a business." Um, what do you think is the the uh, good business for me to start with? Yeah. And suddenly his face became grim. He was angry. He said, "That's a crazy question. That's insane." And I said, "Why are you so angry? I'm just asking." Yeah. Sabina, because that's a stupid question. Wow. And uh, so what's what? What should I do? And he told me, um, "You cannot choose. If you're starting, you cannot choose the business that you like." Sorry for that, Sabine. You, you have to start off what is at hand. What is at hand? Uh, what is wow. uh, the, the things that you know already? Yeah. So that you cannot uh, get can't get wrong with it. Yeah. So I think it's the only way that we know. That's a great My advice. Me. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> So we started it from scratch. Um, I loaned money from my mom because you need the cash flow, big cash flow, because um, you have to pay the fish in cash. Oh. And those retailers that you see selling in the market, yeah, they loan it for you for about five days, and sometimes they don't pay pay you anymore. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you really have to manage your cash. Yeah. So that's it, and it it, it grew in. Wow. When did you fall in love with my Mai? <laughs> <laughs> Since we were in uh, college. Uh, we, we had a high school. High school to bus. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I cannot remember why because it's it's a very long engagement. It took us nine years, really. Nine uh, years. To make up her mind, you know. <laughs> it took her nine years to make up her mind. So, <laughs> so can, can you give the microphone to my Mai? My Mai, so um, you fell in love with. Uh, with this big guy. 
So your your bis it was the business of your mom. Yes. Wow. The business of my grandmother oh, that wow. passed on to my father. Oh. Then the only business that I knew. So we've started it together. I see. But the your business you did it together with Randy. Yeah. I see. And and uh, you started very small, and you borrowed money um, from your parents. Uh, we have 200. I, I loaned, I, I worked from Metro Bank as a teller. I loaned 150,000. Then he has 150,000. We borrowed 300,000 from her mother for with an interest of 6% per month. <laughs> <laughs> And then, in a matter of three months, we lost the 500,000. Oh gosh, why? Um, Don't go to the yeah, details, but because, why? Because the, the retailers just doesn't Did, know how to pay. Uh, oh, That's gosh. why he hate the market at first, because she told me, you run the business, I hate the people who are working there because they are not educated. <laughs> yeah. And I told him, no, just make it, um, just be serious with it. Because, you know, even if it's a marketplace, the people, uh, the money is there. Oh, wow. I was able to convince him for five years <laughs> before he, he, he became serious. <laughs> so it, it started with 300,000 pesos. 500,000. Uh, 500,000 yeah. pesos, but you lost it. Yeah, we lost it at the age of 24 years old. <laughs> and you, how did you recover? Um, you we borrowed just, again? Uh, no, no, no. We the remaining cash, which is fifty thousand. Yeah. We just roll it. Oh my God! So I told him, um, "Let's have faith. God will provide." <laughs> and you, both of you will wake up at two in the morning or even at earlier. At first, yeah, we had a motorcycle. We were, uh, he works at Philacor. I work in Metro Bank. So at two a.m. we wake up, and then we still lovers that time. We are neighbors, so. We went home at 7 a.m. Uh, to change. I go to Metro Bank. Oh he works gosh. to Davao. And then for, that's our life for 10 years. Wow. And then, yeah, it's been uh, for four years because I resigned. Metro Bank paid me. And then after that. Uh, let let me insert this. Edward was saying it takes time. You know, 10 years of doing that. Like you're still employed and then you're working in buying the fish from the fishing boats amazing but then yeah time is really only god really made a way but this time we don't wake up at 2 a.m anymore <laughs> we have people working for us thank you for the truly rich club <laughs> we know how to um, delegate yeah thank you so much <laughs> sir randy <laughs> manolo <that's old> randy <laughs> And also with the wisdom of Brother um, Sir Edward, thank you so much to be generous. How much, this is a crazy question and, and uh, a little bit uh, sensitive because I'm going to ask about money, but how much fish in terms of pesos do you, I mean, just, I just needed, I just want an idea. Can I give the mic to Randy? Yes. <laughs> uh, for the daily fish, it's about 15 to 20 tons a day. 15 to 20 tons a day. Oh. Oh, that, sorry, 15 to 20 tons. Yeah, that's uh, 15,000 kilos to 30,000. Yes. A day. Uh, a day. A day. That, that's uh, yeah. a cycle. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I can't imagine it, but yeah. Woo. And, and, uh, so after 10 years of doing it, you, you resigned from your jobs? No, after four, four years, uh, after six years working in Metro Bank, I, I was kicked out. <laughs> you were kicked out. I was forced to resign for redundancy. Yeah, all right. And then she, uh, he also resigned after uh, the company closed. Oh, okay. So we, we decided to make serious with the business because the business was sidelined before. Oh. But this time we have to make it um, yeah. the main business. Our we're about selling only, we started selling only about 300, 500 kilos a day. Only we started. 500 kilos a day, but now it's 15,000 yeah. kilos, 15,000. Monday to Saturday? Uh, yeah, uh, the fish has no holiday. Um, <laughs> 
it, it should be even on Christmas Day, New Year, especially on the Friday, because uh, if you don't, we don't sell, people aren't gonna eat. So we have to provide all the supply uh, daily, no holiday. <laughs> It, that's an incredible business. And when you have a business that you, you can just, there's cash coming in yeah. and going out every single day. That's, that's wow. That's amazing. Sometimes there's seasons, right? There's seasons in a particular year where there's more orders and more fish. And Hello. Uh, sometimes fish, um, pag, pag may, uh, when the, the, there's a full moon or there's a big storm or typhoon coming in, Fish uh, will be scarce. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So th that would be the cycle. Sometimes okay. it's seasonal. Sometimes yeah. Zamboanga has no fish. Yeah. Sometimes the fish are too many. Yeah. Prices go down as like the the GG they call it the galunggong. Uh, galunggong during the summer sells only for about 25, 30 pesos a kilo. Yeah. But today, this morning, it's sold about 110. Yeah, per kilo. Wow, that's amazing. How many people do you have in your team, the whole company? As of now, we already have about 98. 98, 98 people 98. working with you. And you own this business, no? This is a sole thing. Okay. Any other questions you want to ask our wonderful couple? Yes, Nika. Um, how do you deal with the fluctuating... Uh, the fluctuating prices of the fish. How do you negotiate? Is that a daily, daily? Because you, you, the fish is caught every day, right? And the, how do you deal with the prices with the fluctuating daily prices? Uh, the prices is not being de de determined by me or someone else's. It's being determined by the supply and demand. So if it's few, it's gonna go high. Quality is also a, a factor. Also. There are a lot of factors, really. Uh, the demand, the supply, the quality, uh, the sizes also affects the price. But w what's most important is your credibility as a broker. Because sometimes, uh, there are times when I call the company, in the, the, uh, like the Golongo, for example, he sends me about 10 tons, one truck from Samuanga. And the monitoring today would be about 60 pesos. And he said, uh, okay, I'll send you one, two trucks, or one truck. So when the truck, truck arrives the following day, and it so happened, uh, walang is that. So from the 60 that happened yesterday, today it would soar up to 90. And if I am a, a greedy person, I, I could really just take the 30 pesos. And not, not tell them because our negotiation starts started with sixty, right? Yes. So that that thirty pesos, a thirty ton, uh, ten tons, <laughs> that's three hundred thousand in my pocket already. But uh, the value is the values are so important, and the trust also that uh, really uh, I really put everything uh, uh, in place, honesty, and being that trustworthy person that. Sometimes he jumps for joy that, wow, you sold it at 90. I respect it. It's just like, thank you. And for the next day, I'm sure for the next month, he will deliver. Yeah, and that's it. Wow, that's a great example. Let's give him a big hand for that. That's, that's why the business works. Values, honesty, amazing. Never be greedy. Beautiful. John. Uh, you failed at the start because of collection issue, right? He failed, yeah, yeah because of the, the collection. So, so now that you're, you're this so big, how do you manage now your collection and what system did you put in place? Uh, actually, when, when we, we don't have a right proper uh, a system for collection, but right now, because the market is not open for everyone, eh? uh, you meet people every day, same people, because uh, they just come back for you. Sometimes they're gone. They don't pay you after six months. <laughs> Papakita na lang say, oh, there you are. <laughs> Again, <laughs> can I collect or something? But it's just the, right, it's a journey actually. It's, um, you, you have to understand those things, um, how it runs. 
But right now, uh, I really appreciate uh, like like what uh, Sir Edward told me because we're doing it before. It's the profiling. Since your customer comes back every now and then, you have to profile. Uh, since the three C's, right? the character, the capacity, in the I forgot the one. So so you have to me me we are more on the character. Yes. So not on the the capacity or having a collateral. Yes. Because if the really the person pays you, he will. But if the person doesn't have the character to pay, kahit na may pera siya, he wouldn't, he wouldn't pay. That's true. Yeah. That is so true. That's insight right there. Randy. I just like to ask how, um, how you could scale up your business, even to a point of the Peter's principle point of incompetence. So what's the next step for you to scale up in your business? I mean, right now you're doing okay. You're doing very well. So, what's the next step? Actually, it's so hard to to branch out a certain business like like this because um, eighty percent of our business is anyway a credit. So you you have to have a good system or else you lose all the money. So that's eighty percent. Twenty percent is just cash. Sometimes it's hundred percent credit. So the, the if you, if you want to scale up, we have to do something more like a. I've learned also on my second year here, the truly rich. Uh, it's expanding on a allied business. So we started having a resto, a seafood based resto. Wow! Just just to to have an highlight for expansion, and the, the only thing when we hit the wall is. We have to learn. <laughs> so that's our here always. We're so active and even if we fly every quarter to Manila, because we have to learn. Uh, continuous learning so important. So corollary to that uh, question is, uh, have you ever thought of expanding to different markets? Probably uh, maybe have a cold storage so that you can actually preserve the, the freshness of the fish and probably uh, offer to a bigger market like Manila. Or beyond? Yeah, it's possible, but it's so hard for because we're not producers. Eh? So I, I don't have inventories. So what I do is just, I'm just the middle. So sometimes I, the worst I could have is sell, if, if the fish really rots, uh, uh, like I, ha I had a situation last summer when I have about 20 tons of fish that's not being sold already, the, the tamban, the airing. Uh, no one, no one's gonna buy it, so it's about four days. It's big, uh, it started to rot, so I have to deliver it in Jensen for the fish meal. Fish so meal. yeah, uh, mm -hmm. selling it only about five pesos a kilo. Wow. So I can't really have it in in that that uh, area like uh, production. Sooner maybe I could if I could learn more about production. But we we, we started to plan about since we have the the rest already is to back battle. That butter the Spanish style side is oh, on our okay. So we, we still are on it. But I, I need really a helping hand. I still have to get more people. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. And and uh, so um, if you're going to summarize your journey, your business journey, your success journey, what would you say are the most important principles or secrets that you that made you who you are now, successful. I, I want you to know, by the way, that this couple is not only here with our platinum, but they're very, very active in the light of Jesus. They actually lead a feast in Tagum. And very, very dedicated to the Lord, you know, bringing a lot of people closer to Jesus through their feast and doing great, great work. They're, they're also doing, very involved in the whole of Davao, actually, uh, blessing out many people through the feast. Yes? Yeah. Um, the philosophy, the secret. Uh, yeah. Let's go to the secret. I guess um, it's typing. That's the only secret that we have. Um, we, can I share the story? We don't know really what is typing all about because we are a Catholic and then, <laughs> sorry, that, that's true. <laughs> we, uh, and um, there's a, 
um, a friend, a family friend, who is not a Catholic, who told us that, do you do tithing? I told him, I told her, what's the spelling of tithing? What is that? <laughs> and then she told me that you have to do tithing. I told her that we gave already to Home for the Aged um, Street Children. What else? Um, so she told me that it's not enough. And then, so I, I said, oh, what is tithing? So you, you read the Bible. So I found it in Malachi 3.10. And then that's it. That's the journey. I I keep on reading. Uh, I kept on reading Mother Bo's book. Where should I give my tithes from the gross from the net? It's really a journey. So I said, Oh, I want from the gross. Then where should I give? That's why the Light of Jesus Family in Tagum was born because where we are blessed, pala. So that's it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, for me, uh, there, there are just two things. Um, you have to fight for the things that you love so that uh, you won't cry for them. You, you, you lose them. And I really believe in recent church's words. There's no such thing as a final victory or fatal defeat. So, uh, what's important is to keep going on. Keep going on. Yeah, and believe in trust in the Lord, of course. In God. Let's give a big hand to Randy and Mai Mai. Thank you. Thank you so much.